Today you see two beautiful woven dresses. The original design is meant to be lined. There's the lining inside, but I've also got an unlined version to share. Really pretty dress coming your way. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from liftingpinsandneedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing, and I'm excited to share two woven dresses today. These are so pretty. The dress is new by Itch to Stitch and it's called Fistera. It can actually be a top or a dress. It just depends on how long the skirt is that you sew onto there. So it could be a peplum. You can see the features. What mostly stands out right there is the V-neckline, which I always love. And this bodice isn't a really fitted bodice. There's also a wide waistband that is flat across the front. On the bodice, you have a little bit of gathers going onto that waistband and also the skirt that goes below the waistband. Not much gathering, just enough to give you the space and the volume that you need for your bust cup size. Another thing on this bodice is that at the back, this bodice, the shoulder seams comes forward a little bit. So it's not right at the shoulder, it's a little forward. And then on the bodice, you have some slight gathering over here. So that's pretty. And at the back, you also have a waistband, but at the back you do some shirring and that's the way that your dress has shape and comes in closer to your waist. But because it's shirring and it's elasticated, you can just pull this on over your head without needing any zipper. Super comfy to just pull on and then it'll just come nice and close to the waist without being super tight. So that's nice. These skirt pieces are A-lined, meant to hit midi length, I believe, from the original length. I had to shorten mine a little bit so it could sit above the knee where I like it. Then on the sleeves you have two options so you can sew the sleeve that comes with the pattern and it has a few pleats here along the cap or you can add on another piece at the bottom that will give you a pleated detail there so that is a separate pattern piece what's cool about this dress is that the instructions come ready for you to make this dress fully lined so you have facings inside you have lining pieces inside and it's not hard to do at all <laughs> not hard and you can get a fully lined dress lining a dress is great especially when the fabric recommendations here are lightweight fabrics maybe the drape isn't essential but the lightweight bit is essential <laughs> as i mentioned this design has a little bit of gathering features around the shoulders up above on this waistband on the skirt so i personally prefer fabrics that have a really nice drape for this but you can certainly use lightweight fabrics that don't drape as much. Maybe a lightweight chambray, a lightweight linen. My preference is rayon, rayon types, rayon jelly, you know, 100% rayon lightweight, maybe some textured rayon twill, some tensile twill would be beautiful. And then for the inside, depends on what fabric you're using, you could self-line if you have enough, or you can use rayon Benberg, you could use lightweight cotton voile, or lightweight rayon, something very light inside would be very nice. I didn't really want to use polyester lining fabrics. I think that would just make the dress really hot and it would just defeat the purpose of having a dress made of a lightweight rayon because those are the fabrics I chose for mine. So for my line dress, I have the outer layer in a print, 100% rayon and a solid 100% rayon inside. They are the same types of fabrics. And I did make a sneaky dress that is not lined <laughs> for that one. I also chose a rayon, but it's a little heavier. It is textured, it's black. And I think it's fine on its own in a single layer. I'll just need to wear a fitted slip underneath and I'll be fine. Extra little notions you need, some lightweight fusible interfacing because some of the pieces here are interfaced, the front waistband, the facings, and you also need elastic thread for the shirring. You don't need that much, depends on how many dresses you're making. <laughs> you know, one spool could be enough if you're just making one dress. Because the Fistera dress and peplum is a brand new pattern and it's to stitch, it's 20% off during the first week. That is through Sunday the 2nd of October. So I will leave you my affiliate link down below in the description box, also in the pinned comments. If you use my link, you don't pay anything extra, but part of that sale comes back to me as commission and that is one way you can support the work that I do here on YouTube. You have sizes double zero to 40 US available that goes up to a hip of 62 inches. The best thing is that you have your sewing bust cup sizes from A through double D. Now it's not a fitted dress at all, although the elastic gives you that nice shape but you have around six and a half inches of ease around the bust and at the waist and hips around eight eight and a fraction so it'll be a nice nice comfy roomy dress but it's not going to be shapeless it's going to look really really nice i think having the bust cup sizes there just get you that much closer to having a really great fit i use a sewing c cup size which means I have a three inch difference between my high bust and my full bust. And for this dress, I chose a size 14 for this area up to the waist and then I blend
ended out on the skirt from 14 to a 16 at the hip meant to hit midi length I believe from the original length I had to shorten mine a little bit so it could sit above the knee where I like it the only fitting adjustments I made were to add three quarters of an inch to the length of the bodice so you'll find the shortening and lengthen lines there across all the bodice pieces which include the main pieces and the lining pieces both of these are cut on the fold but you have separate lining for the front and the back of course because it takes into account the facing that's going to finish it inside so if you're going to do length adjustments to the bodice just make sure you do them in the lining as well because it's really important this is a type of design that is a little harder to do flat measurements with to check out how much length you need but when you look at the liner and you see that waistband right there the middle of that waistband should be at the natural waist if you are in doubt make a muslin i added my three quarters of an inch sort of empirically just because it seems to be an amount i need for most of the bodices at each to stitch so i did that and i just went with it and it was spot on <laughs> but that just comes from my experience with the brand and having sewn a lot of the patterns and just knowing my body really well. I am taller also, so I do usually need that little bit of extra length right there. Do you have a little bit of blousing going on? I think it would be uncomfortable if the bodice ended up really tight and you didn't have that blousing going on. It would just start pulling up. So when in doubt, just make a quick muslin of the bodice to make sure that the middle of the waistband is actually hitting your natural waist. If it's not, then you lengthen or shorten to make that fit well because I think it's really important for the bodice to fit well in these types of dresses or else it just doesn't look right, you know? Now, because this isn't the type of dress that you make in an hour, the sewing segment this time is a little longer. It's about 18 minutes, but you'll see how to sew the whole dress. I didn't repeat some of the steps that are the same for the main dress and the lining, but you'll see in general how to put it together and you'll be able to do it for sure. Try to make these nice and easy to watch and I hope you enjoy it. So let's see how to sew the Fistera dress or peplum. These are the main pattern pieces for my dress. I'm doing this in a print. This is the front, it's cut on the fold, it's got a V neckline, it's going to be finished with all the facing and the lining layers inside later. And this is the front waistband. This one is interfaced and you can see it's a little shorter than this and that's because from a notch there and a notch there we need to gather that in to fit the waistband here on the top. This is the back, it's cut on the fold, that's the back waistband also cut on the fold. After sewing these together, then we're going to do shirring here on this back waistband. That is the sleeve. On the cap of the sleeve, you will have two pleats on each side. There is another piece that you can add to this that will give you pleats here at the hem. The skirt pieces are pretty simple. They're A-line. They're both exactly the same for the front and the back. So I've just got them folded up there for now. These are the pieces for the lining. They are not the same pattern pieces as for the main. So here we have a front. Here is the front waistband and there is the facing that's going to go attached to the lining. Instead of gathers here on the shoulders like on the main and around this area we have darts. So those are marked right there. This is the back, it's cut on the fold, that's the back facing, the back waistband. This is going to be sewn in the same way, it's going to be shirred also. And over there folded up are the two skirt pieces that will go sewn underneath this waistband right there. There is a lot of stay stitching to do now in preparation to sewing. And we're going to stay stitch these necklines right here. We're also going to stay stitch the front facing, the back facing, the back and front necklines from the lining. I'm starting by stay stitching the neckline of the front of the main pieces, just a regular stitch length. And I'm doing it directionally from the shoulder to the center, then flipping the fabric and starting from the other shoulder to the center, both for the front and for the back. Continuing with the stay stitching, I'm now doing the necklines of the linings. These are curved, you really don't want these to stretch because you want your facings to match these at a later stage when we get to that. So please don't skip the stay stitching, it's really important. Just get it out of the way in the first few steps. I'm getting all this stay stitching done and now I'm doing it also on these facings. What I have here is the back bodice and what I've pinned to the very bottom of it is the back waistband. It's the same length, it's pretty straight and we're going to sew that at half an inch seam allowance. 
After doing that, I'm going to take one of the skirt pieces and sew it to the bottom of the waistband. So I'm just to make it easier for myself, I'm going to do the pinning stages first. I'm going to pin this to the bottom of the waistband when I have these three pieces together. Here I'm doing the first of these two long seams. This is just sewing the back bodice to the back waistband. The top of the waistband, pretty straight seam at half an inch seam allowance. Now I'm doing the second of these seams that unites the bottom of the back waistband with the back skirt piece. They match perfectly. It's not entirely straight, but it's not too curved. Nothing difficult to do here, just some nice straight sewing. Now I'm just cleaning up these seams with a serger. I'm trimming them down a little smaller to 3 8 to reduce the bulk inside. Here I'm at the iron, here is the back bodice, the waistband and the skirt and I'm just going to press the seam allowances flat like this. So basically at the top of the waistband it goes towards the bodice and at the bottom of the waistband it goes towards the skirt. Get it nice and pressed and neat. We can be ready to do some shirring here on this back waistband area. For the shirring I'm using my elastic thread on the bobbin. I've wound it by hand without tension, just going around and around and around. That's the way it works for me. I've always done it like that. And then you just put this at the bottom like any other regular thread. Here on this area of the waistband, we're gonna be doing some rows of shirring. I'm gonna be guiding myself with the edge of my presser foot so that I can get them all nice and neat. So I've got the edge of my presser foot against the seam there that unites the waistband to the bodice right here. And I'm not gonna start on the very edge. I'm gonna start half an inch in so that the seam allowances are free for later. Here on this other side, also stop half an inch before the edge. Make sure you put a nice amount of elastic thread underneath because it tends to bounce back. If you don't pull out enough, then you're left with a tiny, tiny amount. I've done the first one and now I'm gonna keep going. This can take a while and it can be a little repetitive, but it's only a small area. So because I've already got one section shirt, I'm just keeping it nice and straight like this. Repeat and repeat. There are seven rows of shirring that fit into this waistband. They are marked on the pattern. They're about three eighths of an inch apart. Remember to stop always half an inch before the edge with every single one of these rows. I finished the shirring and what I've done is just take a big needle and push the regular thread towards the back here. So you can see regular thread and the elastic thread. And for each of these rows that we did, we need to knot them so that this doesn't come out afterwards. Two knots per row of shirring right here. You can see that all the edge here was left free from the shirring. So we're gonna have a clean area to sew this later a nice clean seam allowance there are all the knots done nice and neat seam allowance is free on this side and on this other side now we're going to set this aside and work on the front this is the bottom of the front bodice and when you look at the bottom edge you'll find a notch close to the side seams that one is labeled with a v and then coming in towards the center center you have one there and you have one there those are labeled as r and then on this other side you have another v so basically we need to gather from this r to this v so from this section to that section i've got them marked with a red friction pen and i'm going to do two rows of gathering stitches in this area here and on this area there so we can then gather that in to fit the front waistband that will go underneath. I made my stitch length longer to 5.0 and I'm gonna do the first row about a quarter of an inch away from the edge. Okay so that was the first row for the first area that we're gathering. Okay so they are gathered from that V up to this R and now there's a little gap there in the center and here's the next R and we gather to the next V. Now in these same areas, I'm doing the second row of gathering stitches and this I'm going to do it at 5 eighths of an inch so that the gather is going to be right in the middle of the seam allowance there later. Before sewing the skirt onto the bottom of this waistband, I'm going to do the gathering rows here on these shoulder areas. This is wider than the back and there's also going to be slight gathering here. And I'm going to do them in the same way. The first row is going to be at a, 
around the quarter of an inch from the edge and the second one at about five eighths of an inch okay so here is my front bodice it's upside down so the bottom is right here and here i have my waistband this waistband on one of the top edges also has these notches to match okay here's one of the sections this is one of the side seams and we go in a little bit and we find a notch with a v mark on it this is the excess this is an r that's another r and that's another v the letters just help you put this together but there's basically just two sections that you need to gather in the two rows are already here so now we just need to pull them so that these gathers are going to match the length of the waistband that we have underneath it's not excessive the gathers aren't excessive i'm just gonna do it slowly and make sure i get this nice and even. I'll do the same thing on the other side, pin it and then we can just sew this together. So here I'm sewing these two layers together. I have the gathered area on the top of course and my interfaced waistband on the bottom. I do want to see and control these gathers. You can see that my seam allowance is hitting right in the middle of these two gathering rows that I'd done previously makes it super easy and keeps the gathers super neat and we still have some more gathering to do and this is on the top of the front skirt piece so the back one you saw was sewn one to one because it goes in with the shirring afterwards but on the front we don't have shirring so we need to actually gather the skirt into the waistband a little so i'll be doing the same exact two rows okay so now i'm sewing the seam that unites the bottom of the front waistband to the top of the skirt the top of the skirt is slightly gathered into the waistband not much I have the gathers on the top of course and the interface waistband on the bottom and I'm sewing it half an inch seam allowance okay so here I have the front bodice is gathered slightly into the waistband on these areas two separate sections and then we have the skirt gathered onto the waistband also I'm gonna go ahead and search these I've just been to the iron and pressed my seam allowances now for the front it's opposite to what we did in the back in this case, we're pressing both seam allowances towards the waistband. For the back, we had done it the other way. We would press them away from the waistband. So just remember, and these things are going to make a difference when we unite these here. It's going to be less bulky because the seam allowance are going to be going in different directions. Now I've brought the back onto the table again. I've got it right sides up. These are the shoulder pieces. Now these have been drafted to go over to the front a little so this is longer than it would usually be. This area is called a yoke in the pattern but it's not a yoke. It's the same back piece as usual. Now we're going to get our front piece and match these. Now this is where we did those gathering stitches because you can see these are wider than this area also. Pull the strings, gather these to match the length of the back shoulder seam and then sew these seams together. Okay, so here are the two shoulder seams sewn. The front is gathered. It's wider than the back. This is how you're gonna have room for the bust, above the bust. So those are the two sides. I'm gonna serge these. Okay, so the shoulder seams have been sewn. You can see the back comes over towards the front a little and the gathers are right there. That's done, serge the neat. And then I've gone ahead and pinned the side seams, including the bodice and everything it'll just be one straight seam all the way down on both sides that's super easy i'll just do that off camera nothing interesting to see and then we'll lay this aside and we'll work on the lining which is very similar to what we've already done okay this is the back lining and this is the back facing and we need to join these together on this curve now in the instructions you will see the advice to do a few snips on the lining first before sewing it onto the facing i prefer to just pin it sew it and then clip i feel i have better control of the amount i snip into i don't want to get too close to the seam allowance you can try both methods i think i'm able to pin this curve together okay without needing to snip into it first but you might want to do that this has been stasted Stitch. remember we wanted to do that to conserve this shape and I've got a pin marking the center and the center there and I'm just gonna put these together here what I did was pin it nice and carefully and then I've hand basted it I've taken the time to do the exact same thing for the front this is the front now the curve here is a little more steep could be a little trickier I just took a lot of time to pin and hand baste carefully you know this would be so much easier if the seam allowance was a little bit smaller it is difficult to sew this curve with a half an inch seam allowance. If it was 3 eighths or even a quarter, it would be easier, but we'll just go slowly and do this nice and neatly for sure. Having the hand basting is gonna help because I won't have to be dealing with pins while I go around these curves for the front and the back. So let's just get these facings sewn on.
Okay, after sewing this, I'm gonna trim down the seam allowance. Okay, now that I've sewn this and trimmed the seam allowance, now I'm gonna go into the layer of the lining and do some snips. This is the only layer that you need to snip. You don't need to snip the one with the facing, the one that's interfaced. That curve isn't under tension like this one is here. I know it can be a little trickier to do it like this, but I feel safer snipping into the seam allowance here after I've done the seam rather than doing it before. Okay, so now that tension has been removed with the snips here. And then this is how the facing is going to look on this side. And for the back, I'll repeat. I'll just trim down the seam allowance and then come into this curved area of the lining layer and snip into the seam allowance along the curve. Okay, another difference with the front lining is that we don't have gathers on the shoulders or here on this area. Instead, we have darts. That's going to reduce the bulk inside with the lining. If we had gathers everywhere on both layers, it would turn out bulky. So we have these waist darts here and these darts that come from the shoulders. I'm just going to go ahead and sew all of those. I sew them all the same. I start sewing my dart from the tip of the dart and sew towards the wider part of the dart. I don't back tack on the tip of the dart. I just leave the threads loose so I can hand knot them. I'll just get these four darts sewn up. So this is the front lining. I've pressed all the darts. These waist darts were pressed into the center and the darts on the shoulders are pressed outwards there. And you can see that instead of gathers here, it's the same length that we're going to sew it onto the waistband. So that'll be a straight seam there. Then we get the skirt, gather it into this seam right there, exactly the same that we did with the main. So I want repeating steps. Basically the lining is pretty much the same thing that we've already done. Here is the back lining and in the same way that we did with the main, we are going to sew it onto this waistband and then the skirt is going to be sewn onto this bottom of the waistband. We're going to do the shirring here in the exact same way. It's all the same. Once we have the front and the back done, we sew them at the shoulder seams, sew the side seams, and then the way that these all come together is at the neckline. So I'll just repeat all the same steps. Once I've got the lining all together, I'll be back to put the main and the lining here on the top where the facings are. Okay, so here's the lining done. It looks very similar to the main one. It's just that we have a facing there. The back also has the shirring right there and the side seams have been sewn and surged. Now, what we need to do is unite this one to the main. So I'm gonna turn the lining wrong sides out. I'm gonna bring back my main dress and put it inside my lining so that they end up being right sides together. Okay, there we have it. The dress is inside the lining, right sides together here. And so now we align these shoulder seams and all the shape that we have here on this neckline, including that V, and do what we always do. Pin, sew, trim, snip, understitch, and then turn inside. <laughs> I've decided to hand baste these two layers together so I can sew relaxed and not worry about pins while I'm going through the curves. I've shortened my stitch length when I get to the V area there. So it's an area that has a little bit more reinforcement there when we do the snip later on. Half an inch seam allowance and as always it's a big seam allowance to leave in there so I'm trimming that down to about half all the way around really carefully. Then I'm snipping mainly in the back neckline area that's curved, so snipping into the seam allowance to relieve the tension there. And now I'm going to separate these two layers here so that I can access for understitching. Here is the neckline and I want the seam allowance underneath the facing right there and I'm going to understitch right there. And I'm going to sew on the edge right there. Seam allowance is going to be underneath the facing all the way around. Here's the V. I'm going to stop understitching about a quarter of an inch before the tip right there. And I'm going to start again a little further from the V. A little bit forward. I don't want to catch the V exactly. I've tucked the lining back inside the dress. 
you can see there's a facing inside the lining here is the V that's super neat the under stitching is going to keep the facing inside so now I feel like I'm almost done <laughs> I'm just going to press this and tidy it up then here on the armhole we have two layers they are identical layers for the main and the lining what you need to do is just do a basting stitch to hold them in place so that this acts like one and then you can sew on your sleeve this is how the sleeve looks it's taller here in the sleeve cap because of the pleat and you'll find all these little lines here that you draw I've done them with a friction pen there's two pleats on each side and it's super easy to put together because all you have to do is match up these lines like this so you form your pleat with the fabric right sides together I've done it on this side that's how it looks on the top for each of these pleats you have a line and I'm gonna do a basting stitch there to hold it in place once that basting stitch is there we're gonna move all the bulk of these pleats towards the center like that and when you do that you'll get a perfectly rounded cap if you want to make a mistake and press them to the other side you can see it's wrong follow the shape of the fabric it's always going to tell you what is the correct side to do it these are just temporary basting stitches so the pleats won't be sewn down once the sleeve is set in then these come out okay so the pleats are done now i'm going to do a basting stitch across the top to hold them in the shape that they're supposed to be and then these other pleats also go towards the center there so this is ready don't worry it looks strange now but these pleats are going to come out then we're going to sew the little seam of the sleeve here of course we're going to serge this one and we're going to do the hem first and then sew the sleeve this is a dress i made during testing you can see that my lining is brown i had a hard time finding the right type of lining i wish i would have had beige rayon in my stash but it's not a color i would usually buy on its own i don't wear beige things so i didn't even have black rayon on its own for lining but I found this brown and that'll be my little secret inside. No one's going to see the lining but it, it serves its purpose. <laughs> and I think it was good to see a different color in the tutorial also. So that's how that looks. There is the V neckline. You know, you saw that it's super easy to unite these two layers. It's just like sewing on a facing. Only that the facing has a whole other dress attached because you have that full lining. But the technique to do this neckline is the same as we've always done it. All the steps are always the same. This is the simple sleeve with the pleats right there. I think it's really cute. It's not too short, not too long. You can sew another piece right there with pleats, but it's an option I didn't sew. Here are the slight gathers that go on top of this waistband. Slight gathers across the front of the dress, but they're very slight, very slight. And then you have all this shirt area at the back. Now there's one step I didn't film and it's because when I was sewing it, the instruction wasn't there in the tutorial yet. It was something that was added on after I'd sewn my dresses. So when you saw me sewing the shirring, you saw that I started from that seam, three eighths of an inch away from that, same as at the bottom. But in the final instructions, you'll see that you have two more rows of shirring where you sew in the ditch. So right where the seam is, you also do a, a row of shirring there and a row of shirring there. So it's basically nine rows instead of seven. So I'll just turn this around so you can see it. So I did it with combining fabric so you could see the difference, but there is the facing right there. Here is the lining. Here is the front waistband. This front waistband for the lining isn't interfaced like the main one is for the dress. And then at the back, you also have the shirt panel right there. This is great because the elastic of the shirring is never going to touch your skin. And that was what I was mainly worried about when I saw the liner. I was like, oh no, shirring, I can't do that. But then I saw that it was fully lined, including the shirring. So if you have issues with your skin, it's not going to be an issue right here because you just have fabric touching your skin and all the elastic business is in here. It's all in there. You can see that the lining is a little shorter than the main skirt right there. It's about an inch shorter. Love the dress. It feels so nice on. The two layers feel amazing. I think a dress that's lined is always just going to be so much nicer. The weight of the dress itself and the way it hangs is always so much nicer. So definitely worth it to line a dress. And if you'd ever wanted to line one, but most pattern instructions don't have the lining technique, well, here you go. <laughs> Let's see this one on. This is my first Fistera dress. This is 100% rayon in a lovely print. This is a line dress. It's a really lovely fit. you see the details up closer. My skirt is a little shorter than the original, about two and a half inches shorter. And it's just above my knee, mid knee. The way a line dress feels is just so much nicer than when it's a single layer, especially with a lightweight fabric like this. And I really love the look. You can see at the back that there's a shirt area and at the front, there's a waistband 
The middle of that waistband needs to hit your natural waist and that shirt panel at the back is going to give you that ease you need while still keeping the look nice and fitted to the body. Here is the neckline, it's a V neckline and the sleeves have a few pleats on the cap. Very nice, very comfortable, roomy. And there's another piece you can add to that one that has pleats on the hem of the sleeve if you want to. It's a very clean finish front and back with a facing that's attached to the lining. The V is not too deep, it's not too high, I think it's just right and you can see a closer look at the pleats there super easy to sew I really love the dress I think it's really worthwhile making the fact that it's lined already in the instructions is great because we are usually trying to line dresses that aren't lined in the instructions not the case this time bust cup sizes help certainly and I think the fit is beautiful This is my second Fistera dress. This is a black 100% rayon. I hope the camera can pick up the texture that this fabric has. It sort of looks like crocodile, crocodile texture, I don't know, or snake, I don't know. But it's so, so lovely. <laughs> and that is why I wanted to make this dress because it's solid. You know, a black dress could be a little bit boring, but because this is textured and the design is so pretty, I'm gonna really enjoy it. You can still see the features here. There's the waistband, the gathers of the skirt gathers here above on this waistband the neckline my lovely sleeves and the shirring at the back now this one is not lined it's just a single layer this one because it's a solid I didn't really want to hem it with a sewing machine I think it would have ruined it so I've done that by hand and instead of doing all the lining I just use the normal facing pieces that you have in the dress so this is on the front loose right here interfaced I've surged the edges but at the back, I did sew it from the seam all the way around here because I don't want it loose at the back. And I think that keeps it really neat and comfortable. I'll just wear this with a slip underneath. There is a waistband that's interfaced. I definitely did not have enough of this fabric to self-line. I had just enough to make this dress <laughs> and I didn't really have any other fabric that was appropriate. But I think you can make the dress unlined. It's your choice. I think the hack in this pattern is to make it unlined and the proper way to do it is lined but I think you can choose and you have a great result either way just make sure you have a layer to wear underneath if your fabric is really light let's see how this one looks this is my second Fistera dress you'll see the details up closer but this is a black textured rayon 100% rayon a little heavier and I made this one unlined it still works I do have a fitted slip underneath otherwise it's got all the original features of the pattern my skirt is a little shorter also to match my personal style there's a wide waistband there at the top of the skirt slight gathering and the shirt area at the back it's a very very comfortable dress to wear that follows your shape nicely but does not feel fitted or constrictive there is that waistband up closer it fits really well there's gathers above the waistband and below the waistband but as you can see you can stretch that because all that shirt area at the back is going to give you all that extra ease and comfort while keeping the silhouette nice and close to the waist love that there are the little sleeves with pleats on the top very comfortable fit easy to sew and this one I used the facings but I didn't sew the lining to the facings there is the V neckline it's very pretty and you have gathers there on the shoulders I've always loved that feature and I'm very happy to have another little black dress I didn't have a woven black dress in a style like this and I think I'm gonna get a lot of wear out of it I especially plan to pair this with my printed blazers <laughs> love it so much it's so so cute fits amazing
Don't forget to check out the Fistera dress and peplum. It's a beautiful, beautiful pattern. I think it will look great on a lot of people. It's just beautifully shaped and the fit is just amazing with the cup sizes. And if you've never lined the dress, maybe this can be your first one that you do lined. And you know, the instructions are there, the pattern pieces are there. You don't need to hack anything or think anything up. It's all there for you. And you'll get a beautiful, beautiful dress that feels amazing on. They always feel so much more expensive on when they lined in my opinion that's why I do line a few of my things anyway so I'm very happy with my two dresses I know I'm gonna wear them a lot I hope you give a style like this a go so pretty so pretty I'm sure you're gonna love it that's all from me today I'll see you again with more sewing in a few days bye